Chapter 6. Trouble always starts when you are out of proportion with whom you are talking to. After lunch, a creamy... Uh, after a lunch of creamy leek and potato soup with chunks of homemade bread and salty butter, Tilly headed out to find Jack, ready to beg or steal something sweet. But before she made it to Jack's cafe at the back of the ground floor, she was struck on the floor forehead by a jelly bean. Turning the direction it had come from, she saw a girl in a full skirted blue dress sitting in, on the stairs, lazily throwing jelly beans toward the nearest bookcase. Did I hit you? I'm sorry. I was aiming for the cat. Does it have a name? Do you like it? Do you think it likes sweets? Tilly stared at her, and the girl widened her eyes in, in impatientness. The cat. What's it called? My cat is called Dinah. She's called... Ah. Uh, the girl looked directly at her, and Tilly felt that little itch in her brain. Alice. She's called Alice. You don't seem very sure about it, the girl said, peering at Tilly. But never mind that, because my name is Alice too. How curious. Alice? Tilly repeated, yes. Alice, she said again slowly. And what is your name? Matilda Tilly interrupted. Whatever your name is, there is always time for good manners. It's very rude to interrupt. I'm sorry, Tilly said. It's nice to meet you, Alice. Um, would you like a cup of tea? Maybe? Nice to meet you, Matilda, Alice replied and bobbed a, a neat curtsy. Tilly tried to copy, but just ended up doing a small, awkward bow. And thank you, but no thank you. I don't tend to eat or drink in new places until I've thoroughly got my bearings. Alice looked Tilly up and down. We both seem to be around the same size, though, which is a good sign. Trouble always starts when you are out of proportion with whom you are talking to. Are you looking for a book, Tilly asked. Not especially, although I've never, I'm never averse to finding a book along my way. They can come in handy sometimes, except you never know what's inside until it's too late in my experience. She sighed extravagantly. Do you know someone once told me? But explanations take such dreadfully long time that one should focus on adventure, and I have rather come to their way of thinking. So, if you'll excuse me, and with that, I'll skip toward the back of the bookshop, passing a round little man with a very neat mustache, passing who was coming the other way. The little man gave no indication of having seen her, but gave a neat bow to Tilly's direction. Excuse you, moi, mademoiselle. Tilly's head spun, spun, but as she turned round to watch the man leaving, she found herself face to face with the red-headed girl from that morning. They stared at each other. You, the girl said, sounding surprised. You, Tilly said. You're back. You seem so familiar to me from somewhere. What school did you go to? The girl tipped tilted her head to one side and stared at Till Tilly. I go to school in Avonlea, she said, near my home at Green Gables. And your name is Anne? Tilly said slowly. With an E. Anne reminded her. Anne with an E from Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables? The girl nodded, still openly staring at Tilly. But who are you? I'm I'm Tilly with a Y from here. But you remember me, and now I am here. I remember you, Anne said in wonder. As I said, I we would literally met this morning, Tilly re repeated. But how can you be Anne of Green Gables? She's not a real person. Well, I'm absolutely really here, she said, reaching out and touching Tilly's arm gently. Is this a joke, Tilly? 
said, looking behind her as if she would see hidden cameras somewhere, or wondering if she was part of some elaborate setup by Granddad to entertain her during the holidays. You're from a story. Why, yes, Anne replied happily, not seeming at all perturbed by the fact and settling herself on the stairs. You're real, but you're not real. You're from a book, but you're here, Tilly said, feeling her brain wasn't quite keeping up with what was happening in front of her. Well, why on earth does being from a book mean I'm not real? asked Anne. I'm as real as you, or the shop, or Julius Caesar, or the Lady of Charlotte. You can touch my hair if you'd like, and you'll see it is ever so real to my internal frustration. Tilly had to admit that Anne's physical appearance was undeniable. Right, Tilly said, sitting down next to Anne, determined to try to wrap some logic around what seemed to be happening. Well, what are you, were you doing in Green Gables? Before you came here, how did you get out? I was sitting in the orchard, imagining all the places I might visit when I'm older. And then I was here. But how, Tilly? I was almost bursting with frustration. I don't know. I just was. I think it's rather marvelous. If you like, I can invent a thrilling story about how I got here. Magic spells and a glittering portal. Maybe some kind of benevolent but cursed princess living in a tower who writes poetry and is only a single glass of water is only allowed a single glass of water each day. Tilly interrupted her before she got more carried away. But how will you get back? Won't there be gaps in your book spoiling your story somehow? You being here? I'll just go back after I'm here, and I don't think it can spoil my story. I rather think only I can spoil my own story. Tilly sighed and put her head on her knees and then thought of something. Did you see the other girl who was here? She asked, Alice. But when she raised her head, Anne was no longer there. Okay, that was the end of chapter six. Our next chapter is chapter seven, Imaginary Friends. Till next time, bye.